so we just came off of the Regent Splendor, and uh, usually this is a type of a time in a, uh, a cruise. It's very sad. You have to go home, but that's not the case for us. We are continuing on. This has just been a prelude. So uh, we're going to go to uh, our hotel, drop our bags, and we're going into Rome. And then we'll talk about what we're getting ready to do. All right. See you in a few moments. Well, getting off the ship was actually pretty easy. We were able to get our bags and we got a taxi. We've already checked into the uh, a room, nice size room, pretty dated, but you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Now what we're doing is we are walking to the train station to go to Rome. Yeah. All right, so after an a fairly uneventful uh, train ride. We are here in Rome. We got off at uh, St. Peter's Basilica or at St. Peter's Trade Station. We're walking to St. Peter's right now. Uh, one of the things we found out is uh, if you're going from uh, Chacha to Vecchia and to Rome and you're going to be uh, you're traveling in Rome, there's something known as the BIRG ticket for 12 euro. It gives you a 24 hour use of the regional trains and all the metros, which is a pretty good deal. So. Uh, just about 10 minutes, we should be at St. Peter's. St. Peter's Square was completed in 1667 after it was felt that a space was needed for people to join public events such as papal masses. The architect responsible for the square was the famed Italian sculptor and artist John Lorenzo Bernini. Measuring 320 meters long and 240 meters wide, as many as 300,000 people have gathered in the square. So we finally made it to St. Peter's Square, and then it was closed, so we have to come back in about an hour. So we might go get ourselves a piece of pizza. I think we can find one here in Rome. Figured out the delay. It was a papal audience this morning. They closed everything down for about an hour. We thought about leaving, but then we saw people standing around and we figured we'd better just hang on. And sure enough, they opened up and so we are now walking into St. Peter's Basilica. Behind me is one of my most favorite sculptures in St. Peter's. It is the Pietà. It is a sculpture that was done by Michelangelo between 1498 and 1499. So I think this is actually the fifth time I've actually, the fifth or sixth time I've actually been to Rome. And every time I've come here to St. Peter's, it is absolutely one of those things that absolutely knocks my socks off. It's important that actually it took about 120 years for this actually to be built from 1506 to 1626. And of all the different architects that actually, uh, actually worked on it, one of ones actually was Michelangelo himself. What is really, really cool, we'll show you the dome in a second. The dome here, today, even though it was finished in 1626, is still the tallest dome structure in the world, which is pretty interesting. Behind me is St. Peter's Baldacchini. This is the canopy that goes over the altar. It was designed by Bernini, and it is 94 feet tall, which is about nine stories high. I mentioned that the uh, dome here in St. Peter's still is the tallest dome structure in the world. It is at 448 feet. Uh, to give you a perspective, Tracy told you that the Baldacchini by Bernini is nine stories tall, but if you look at the letters around the dome, each one of those letters are six feet tall themselves. It's just magnificent uh, what they're uh, built here. Just wonderful.
Bernides Boldica not only towers over the main altar, but also where St. Peter, the first pope of the Catholic Church, is likely buried. For hundreds of years, pilgrims would come to the Vatican to kiss the foot of Onorfo di Cambio's 13th century bronze statue of Peter. Today, most people just touch his foot, worn down by millions of faithful Christians. Despite visiting St. Peter's many times before, Tracy and I had never explored the archaeological site under the Vatican as part of what is known as the Scavi Tour. In 1941, workers reconstructing the Vatican grottos discovered a mausoleum that dated back to 130 AD. Pope Pius XII then authorized archaeologists to begin excavating the area below the Vatican. This, by the way, gives the tour its name, as Scavi means dig or excavate. Eight years later, Pope Pius declared that likely the bones of St. Peter had been found as part of this effort. Now, we were fortunate to get tour tickets from the Vatican Excavation Office months in advance. While the cost is just 13 euros, only 250 people in groups of 12 are allowed to visit each day. Meeting up with our group, we're introduced to our very knowledgeable tour guide who explains the history of the Vatican and the excavation. She then explains that where we were standing would have been the site of the Circus in Nero or the Vatican Hippodrome, which is where the Emperor Nero ordered the crucifixion of St. Peter in 64 AD. On the ground is a marker that designates where the obelisk in Nero's circus would have stood. It is here where Nero most likely would have had Peter executed. By the way, that same obelisk is the one that now stands in the middle of St. Peter's Square. Now we go inside and our guide briefs us on what we're going to see. Now, unfortunately, when we go down into the necropolis down these stairs, we will not be able to take any pictures or video, so we're going to be using some pictures already available on the web. Now, we learned that St. Peter's Basilica is actually built on the site of an earlier basilica that was built by Constantine around 360 AD. In order to build on a level foundation, workers had to cover an old pagan cemetery with dirt. Now, this cemetery was right next to Circus Nero when Peter was killed, and that's the reason why you're here. Now, during the excavation, Archaeologists uncovered the cemetery, revealing simple graves to beautifully appointed mausoleums decorated with frescoes and mosaic tile floors. But what we're looking for is a red wall that lies exactly below the altar in the basilica. It is against this wall that Christians in the 2nd century erected a shrine to St. Peter. Now, it wasn't a large shrine, maybe about 9 feet tall. Now, what is interesting is that while Christian markings such as this one are found elsewhere in the cemetery, it was only on the red wall next to this shrine that archaeologists found this wall fragment with the Greek letters P-E-T-E-N-I. Translated, it declares that Peter is here within, and found in the niche within the shrine of St. Peter is where 135 bones, possibly belong to St. Peter, were found. Now, of course, there is no way to definitively prove that these bones are Peter's, but there is certainly a good deal of circumstantial evidence. Now, this includes nearly 2,000 years of Christian tradition, the proximity of Circus Nero to the cemetery, and the inscriptions on the graffiti wall. Plus, when the bones were evaluated, scientists determined it was from a man between 60 and 70 years old, which is the age of Peter, and then his foot bone had trauma consistent with Roman crucifixion practices. In 2013, Pope Francis displayed a box holding some of the bones to the public for the very first time, and then in 2019, gifted these nine bone fragments to the Patriarch of the Orthodox Church. Now, whether these and the other 126 bones are that of St. Peter is still up for debate, but the Scavi tour makes a pretty compelling case that whether or not these are his bones, St. Peter had been laid to rest under the basilica that bears his name. All right, so we spent almost five hours here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk. Uh, I think we're gonna end up at Piazza Novo. That's what we think we're gonna do. And uh, get some food. Built in 139 AD to be the mausoleum of Emperor Hadrian, this castle to the Pope actually has a fortified corridor that leads all the way back to the Vatican. Before the Piazza Novata, we grab a bite to eat. In 80 AD, this was the stadium of Domitian, but in the 17th century, Pope Innocent X hired some of the best sculptors in the land to construct three fountains in the square. I'm sure it was just a coincidence that the Pope's family palace faced the square.
the Pantheon. This iconic building was built in 126 AD at the direction of Emperor Hadrian as a temple to all of the Roman gods. However, since 609, it has served as a Christian church. In 19 BC, a spring was discovered 10 miles from the city. The Romans built the Aqua Virgo Aqueduct to bring this water to the city, and it ended here where the Trevi Fountain stands today. What is amazing is that this 18th century fountain, the largest in Rome, is still supplied with water from that Aqua Virgo Aqueduct. One of the reasons we love Rome is that it's a safe, walkable city. It seems that every 100 meters is another thing to see. Just be wary of pickpockets. It's almost 10 o'clock and we need to make the last train back to Cevita Vecchia from the Rome Termini train station. After all, we need a good nice rest for our second day exploring Rome. So good morning. It is day two. We are still in Civita Vecchia. Our cruise leaves tomorrow. Yesterday we went to Rome. We had a great time. And today we are going to be going back down to Rome on the express train, which was really easy to do. And then we're going to be headed off to the Borghese Gardens to see the Bernini sculptures. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, by the way, Chasey said a cruise. Yes, that's right. We're on another cruise. Uh, we will be tomorrow at 11 o'clock getting onto the Oceania Marina to do a transatlantic going from Rome all the way to uh, Miami. The first 11 days are stopped, so a lot more content coming to you. So go and subscribe, and uh, we'll meet you uh, in Rome. We have made it back into the city from a nice little train ride and we are at one of the places that I love going to in Rome. It's the Spanish Steps and they're right behind me. I'm pretty sure that the Spanish Steps were named after the Spanish Embassy, but the Spanish Embassy is no longer there anymore. At 192 acres, the Borghese Gardens is the third largest public park in Rome. Previously a vineyard in 1605, Cardinal Borghese, who was the nephew of Pope Paul V, began turning it into the most extensive gardens in Rome since the Roman Empire. We made it. Uh, we uh, got here to the Borghese Gardens. It's right by the Via Venido. And back behind me is the Borghese Gallery. This is one of my favorite places. I've been here several times before. Uh, on the first floor, they have a lot of Bernini sculptures. Uh, Bernini is by far in, uh, my favorite sculptor in the entire world. Uh, remember the Balicaccia, that nine-story uh, structure, the altar in the, in, in the uh, Vatican, that was actually done by Bernini, as was as well was, he was the architect for St. Peter's Square, so kind of connecting everything together. So we're gonna go in, we get, uh, whenever you go here to the Borghese Gallery, you have to get a ticket ahead of time, it's by time, you actually only get two hours in the museum. So uh, we got uh, 17 minutes to get checked in, and then uh, we'll show you what we see.
I thought the museum was amazing. Every time we've, well now this is the second time we've been there, I see new things. I'm just amazed by the attention to detail. And it's a really pretty museum just in itself, outside of the sculptures and the pictures. I'm going to be honest with you, this is not going to be the last episode you ever have us in uh, Rome. Rome absolutely is my favorite, favorite, favorite European city. Paris comes to a second, a close second, but Paris is it. I mean, where we are, we're right back behind here. You have the Forum, you have, the, I think it's called the Emmanuel uh, Victoria um, over here. Uh, down here, uh, where, uh, behind where Tracy is uh, filming me is the Colosseum. There is so very much to do in Rome. Rome is one of those places where we, if you walk through a city, and that's how Tracy and I like actually exploring a city is walking through it, we get the essence of it. Literally every five to 10 minutes, you're in one of these old wild places and Rome just ticks that every, every moment. was just saying we just walked from the forum and now we're at the arch of titus and off to my right is a coliseum it is magical here at nighttime it's so cool to come here We have finally got back uh, home. Uh, we're going to go back and uh, get some sleep, and this is kind of it. Uh, next tomorrow, uh, we are getting onto the Oceania Marina. Okay, so come on along with us. Uh, we want you to continue along with our travels. So, uh, literally, what we're going to be doing, literally in the next five months, we're literally going around the world. And yes, I know I said literally several times. In any event, so go on to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And as always, keep on traveling.